Welcome to another episode of Inside the Hexagon. Let's talk about the Houston Dynamo here on the Striker Texas. Obviously brought to you by the StrikerTexas.com. Um, if you want to get some in, some news about any of the Texas teams, MLS, and WSL, USL Championship, uh, we got some local feature stories as well. The StrikerTexas.com. Um, give it a shot. First 30 days are free. Um, so you can actually uh, get some of the coverage before you, you maybe... Uh, decide if you want to if you want to stay on but as always here we are inside the hexagon um i'm one of your hosts victor Araiza, and, and i'm joined as i am always by laura gomez both in the houston area both bringing you local coverage <laughs> uh international break uh, have you been getting some rest laura uh what's rest um i haven't <laughs> heard of that in a while so i'm gonna go with no um international break doesn't really mean kind of <laughs> break it means just cover international soccer instead um i'm doing good how about you yeah um good to get a little break from the regular uh normal games i guess it's uh there's a lot of good international games too which i guess it's always uh it's always fine um you know yeah. just kind of see some some different things uh and then obviously playing for mexico so we get a good a good idea there um by the way, feature up on the Striker Texas on, on Coco Carrasquilla about playing with Panama and, and how um, that'll help him refresh his batteries for Houston, getting to see some some family he hasn't seen in a long, long time, his, mm. his parents, his brothers, right? Um, so so I think it for all of us, it is it is a bit of a, of, of a good break, right, to kind of just um, put, a, put a sort of a pause, a little disconnect, and then kind of uh, look back at, at the season that is so far. I think um, uh, at least on this podcast, that's what we're going to do here today. So um, <laughs> let, let's kind of just dive in. Just what, what is your your overall thought on the season so far? Um, Houston, y- you know, I, I guess it it's, it's either glass half full or glass half empty, depending on, on how you look at it. And obviously for a lot of people, finishing last in the Western Conference for the last two years in a row, is mm-hmm. going, you know, this is this is obviously better than expected, but but obviously if you if you compare a little bit, um, team was in a similar position, right? Last year, um, at the international break, you're in the you're in the hunt, right? You're inside the playoff, uh, the the seventh playoff uh, places in the Western Conference. Um, is this about where where you want to where you want to be, where you'd like to see the team be? Um, I just think that it, it's, it is a little better. Okay. I'm not going to go <laughs> half full, half empty. I'm going to go kind of like in the middle. I think that they're doing a little better perhaps than maybe what I, what I would have expected at this point. Um, there's been some important wins that I didn't think the team, the team was going to be able to pull off just because, you know, again, it's a season that they're renovating. Things are changing, new coach, new owner, just a lot of things that are, are changing, something that has been kind of common within the team for a couple of years now. So I'm not going to say that they're at their best. Um, I'm like wowed by them, but I'm not going to say I'm like, oh, well, that's um, the worst that they could be. So I want to say it's like in the middle. Um I'm still, again, and I know I've said this before in other podcasts, but I'm still not really convinced that they're going to make it to the playoffs. Um, I know yet, like yesterday or last night, I don't know when, I, my time conception has kind of gone out the window at this point. Um, but I kind of put out a, out there on Twitter and I was like, okay, talk to me, you know, Dynamo fans. Let me know if you even cared about, you know, the cup that they just got eliminated from. Was it really something that they wanted or what are your thoughts? So the, the, the answers that I got were kind of um, half half and half, you know. So shout out to the people that participated in my little questionnaire on Twitter. Um, hopefully you guys are listening to us. I mean, some people were like, yeah, why not? Because, you know, that's a, that's a cup that you can play a lot of your younger players and give them opportunities to see what they can right. do, what they can't do. Um, other people were like, no, I want them to be concentrated on the playoffs. Like, come on, what's going on? So, you know, and, and then, of course, there was people that were like, why can't we do both? Um, so with that, I mean, I've been very outspoken to say that I, the, you know, the cup for me was nothing. I really didn't, wasn't really interested in it just because of the history of the team of the prior seasons of not making right. the playoffs. So right. I think that should be the number one thing. I do agree that it's a good cup because it, it does give the opportunity to younger players to have more playing time and, and stuff like that. And why not win something else additional, right? But I think that 
those kind of victories and those kind of cups goes to teams that are already kind of more established um, within the MLS already and on a secure path. Or, towards or if the you're playoff. the 2018 Dynamo teams that play all of their games at home, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, exactly. That's what I say. Or that you just concentrated on that that kind of cup. I yeah. mean, yeah. So that that it's, was kind of like the feedback I got back. Yeah, I think there's one thing. I think it's the easiest trophy to attain, right? The U.S. Open Cup, uh, because I think as far as MLS Cup contenders, it's um, if the Dynamo wanted to be in the mix, I think the, the, the pathway is, is there, right? They're a little closer with, with, with Herrera coming on soon. Um, buying a player like Sebastian Ferreira, bringing in a goalkeeper like Steve Clark. Um, they've helped themselves in, in, in those positions, but there's still the overall roster. I, still, I think there's still holes in certain positions that... Um, it's not expensive to address and it's never been, and, and that's been the argument over the last years here in Houston, that these aren't expensive issues to address. If you're doing the right scouting, I know general manager Pat Onstad mentioned, I think in the, in, in a few radio shows that with Glenn Davis, that if, you know, their scouting networks is basically bare bones, right. For as much as Matt Jordan was selling us on Vicente Sanchez was a scout, mm -hmm. right. On uh, Phillips and Neros was a scout. All these guys, all these former players were scouts. Uh, Pat on set coming in saying, no, it's all bare bones. There's nothing here. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe that's part of the story. I think regardless of, look, I think there's, I'm a little more glass half empty. I, I guess I always am. I don't know if you <laughs> fans will, will categorize me this way, but I just think, no. Again, if we're talking about this new energy at the beginning of the year, right? Re remember, right? Remember the preseason, yeah. right? Oh, remember the, me the media, yeah, yeah. New energy. Houston has to live up to 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 what a, a city like Houston is in the United States. Uh, I feel like I'm boring you here, <laughs> but it's this is what we heard, right? This is exactly yeah. what we heard, and I feel like that energy kind of just started to wane and wane and wane a little bit. Um, I think there were some some issues, right, that we spoke in the preseason. Um, there were guys that you could have cut then and bring in some younger guys, some different different uh, different people in certain positions. That wasn't addressed. Yeah, and I mean, you saw, there wasn't a lot and, and of you, change. And you saw some of that uh, um, be exposed or, or essentially, you know, come to show itself again this season. Um, we'll see what they do here in the summer transfer window. But even just, um, you know, there was going to be a little bit of a transition period here with new head coach and how he was going to manage games, et cetera. Um, you know, if Dynamo didn't want to go with the more experienced coach, well, you know, there's no guarantee that that yeah. would have worked either. But from the way that games have gone this year, right, we'll just focus on those, right? Um, scoreless draw in the first game against Salt Lake, right? Uh, a a one-nothing loss at Kansas City with that, you know, Maybe now it seems like it's a game they should have won, although I, I still think there's something about that stadium that just Dynamo can't can't uh, unlock. So, I'm, so I'm, I'll forgive them that one, right? But I think the Salt Lake, the first game at home, when they didn't have a few of their key players, right? Um, that one you could have won. Uh, they won the one against Vancouver. They, they were a little loose in the beginning against Colorado, and then Colorado invited them back in, and they, they only walked away with a draw there, right? Mm -hmm. uh we know the road win at miami uh the 4-3 win against san jose the portland game right another scoreless draw at home um but that was kind I of i mean i mean i think that was in a <laughs> that was a winnable one i think yeah that was a winnable one but I, that's the one that they also had a person less right i'm trying to remember Later in the game, Hadebe uh, gets yeah, okay. double yellow, but yeah, yeah. but I still think that was a winnable game in the in the first stages of the game. Um, this could have been like the Nashville game where you you might have had a lead and 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 worked it out, right? Uh, I don't think I think Portland. If this game was in Portland, then yeah, I think uh, all edge to them. But I, I think this is when you you should have won at home. Uh, open Cup against RGV. We'll, we'll we'll gloss over that because we're talking about the league here. The game at FC Dallas, right? That's when they should have won. They had in control, even though they were up one nothing and, and allowed two late goals. Um, that's kind of where it starts to unravel a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the loss at home against Austin that should have been three points at home. Uh, DC United, that's a that's a way. We're not going to worry about that one. Uh, San Jose, I mean San Jose, San Antonio. That's Open Cup. We're gonna. We know Nashville, we know Seattle, uh, and then obviously this last stretch with LA and uh, RSL, right? Um, 
So where are the Dynamo now? Um, I'll tell you in a little bit. Uh, five, six, three. It's a losing record, Laura. It's 18 points. They're in seventh place in the West. But if you add these points that I just mm-hmm. told you about, right, the four home games that they should have won, right, that we talked about this, this, this beginning home stretch could have been so important for them to platform themselves, right? Um, that's eight points. Ten points, if you count that FC Dallas game, they, they screwed up in Frisco, right? That would give them 26 to 28 points. You know where 26 mm-hmm. to 28 points would have them in the Western Conference right now, Laura? Yes. It would have them at FC number... Dallas in second or actually either way. Above yeah, I would have them right in second, like around second. Place. Second. Mm-hmm. second place because LAFC is at first 26. with 29. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and I know it's, it's whatever. Could have, should have, would have, but. Um, I was just going to say that. <laughs> but my point is, I'm not, I'm not. I don't feel this is this, this is an absurd. Oh well, if Quintero would have scored this goal, I mean, no. I mean, it's. I think these are these are several instances that were very similar, right? That were all in their reach, and and this is uh, to my point, right? Going back to preseason, this is what we're talking about. With the current roster you have, you're going to have a lot of those same situations you had last year, where you're going to have these games where, like, oh, if Quintero had just scored that one, or or I mean. You know, last year it was Maxi. You know, this year it's Ferreira and struggling at the number nine position, right? I mean, if he just did this here or did that there, or you know, or, or, or if he just could have defended this goal better, I mean, in in that in in that frame of mind, the team is still in the same situation, and it has cost them points this season, and that's why mm-hmm. they're not in a better situation going ahead now when they have a few more road games than they do at home for the rest of the year. Um, and, and now that's going to essentially dictate the rest of the year. You don't get to play um, play some of those games over where you know you were better, right? And, and the biggest thing for me, right, how can you assure yourself of more victories? Go get better players, right? Um, stop screwing around with some of these guys that you know aren't going to give you much, right? Um, there's been a little bit of turnover, right? Beto Avila, guys like that, getting more minutes. Um that 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 have kind of you know he's been one of rev- the revelations I think to to get younger legs in there at least you've seen a, a little bit of an impact uh, but one guy's not enough right you need a couple more guys uh, Thoro Farson was was picked up in the super draft he's been more effective than previous super yeah draft I mean picks. I think yeah I think that he's done the games that he's played he's done you know he's had good plays here and there I think he's still a little new he's not, he, he's yeah he's like, not good enough for a backup I feel. I think for a backup, you need somebody that needs to be pushing Ferreira big time, right? But for a guy you picked up off the Super Draft and expected nothing from, essentially, you're getting a bit of an upside. Yeah, I think that he has, he's had decent games. I think he's played what? How many games? Like one, two, three. Three games? I can't recall exactly the number of games that he's played, but I know that uh... the times that I've seen him play... It has been. Um, he started. He started three. He's had fourteen off the bench. He's three hundred and sixty nine minutes, which is not a lot, but it's. Yeah. He's been picking up some some more minutes here lately, and obviously still searching for his first goal. And in, in uh, actually, no, he has his first goal. He scored in that LA game, um, which was a breakthrough moment, I think. And I think I think at at the pace that you want him to 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 be going, he's fine. I I. But what I'm saying is. That's not a guy that ideally in a more competitive team should yeah. be your backup striker, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And and that's and, and those are the kind of little things that that kind of go around you. You know, the use of open spaces, I th- I think is still is still a problem. Um, you know, what's going to be the situation now going forward, right? I mean, it looks like it's going to be possibly a midfield of uh, of Herrera, Carrasquilla, and. Quintero, I mean, or is Quintero going to get moved out wide and you're going to put Vera in there? Um, because at the, at the end of the day, somebody's got to create some attack. Yeah, right? I mean, I that's mean, been a problem. And I think that also there's been some problems also in, in, the, in the more defensive side. And I think that, you know, Clark has saved the team from a lot of goals being scored on because sometimes I feel like I see the defense. Yeah, he's, he's it's to too me, open. He's the biggest offseason signing. Yeah, he is. He is more he so is than Ferreira. Because, yeah, I, oh, I, 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 I 100% agree because maybe long term like, Ferreira, you know, is yeah, is but Ferreira still, 
Ferreira, his position sometimes, like you mentioned before, kind of depends on what he has, people filtering balls to him, et cetera, et cetera. While, you know, Clark, he he could be a one-man kind of show um, because he depends on whatever the opposing team kind of kind of does too, right? How aggressive they are and et cetera. But I think he that was something that the you know the dynamo was missing seasons back, having um, somebody that was, you know, a veteran with experience, knew what they were doing, right. had talent in the back um, to make the other parts of the team feel a little bit safer. Um, I think that that part's locked down, but I feel like the defense has, in a lot of games, um, done a lot of rookie mistakes, um, not watching, you know, the other player that you're supposed to, you know, be man on or, or see things like that. Be very open, disorganized sometimes, and make careless mistakes that if it wasn't for Clark would end up in the back of the net or end up in the back of the net, the, the net no right. matter You would have lost more Clark points tries. with the lesser goalkeeper. I, I agree. Exactly. And I think that's to, to their credit, right? To the credit of this of this staff here, Pat Onstad, uh, Asher Mendelssohn and so on. I mean, that's a position that was addressed. That was a position where you said, this is our starter, right? And that's mm-hmm. something that the team didn't have before. I mean, even, even in some of the more um you know the most recent successful year right it was uh you know sometimes it was tyler Derrick, then it was joe willis right you kind of had michael nelson waiting in the wings i mean it's uh you have a defined guy there now that's that's great i think uh and i think you you sort of have a defined back four i think is what we've seen right seca has seemed to taken over that that right back position which i think we all kind of knew once he got purchased that yeah that, that was he... going to be the that was going to be the situation I think uh, Tim Parker, Teenage Hadebe, um, for the amount of money you guys are paying him anyways, right? Both of them are have making about a million. They have to be on there, right? And, I, and and to be fair, I think it works out that they they really are your better central defenders. I mean, I think Ethan Bartlow has um, has pushed a little bit, right? Uh, Daniel Steris may be a good better than have, but for people calling for Daniel Steris to start, stop. No, that, that's not going <laughs> to... Um, <laughs> I'm just not. And and the 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 one that I do have is Adam Lundqvist, right? I mean, he's a guy that I I don't think has progressed. I don't think has had a it's kind a, of stalled a big ascent. Yeah, since since he got here. I mean, he, he remember even when he was a little bit younger. I mean, he was still um, benched to Beasley. And the only reason he he solidified that starting position uh, is once Beasley retired. I mean, I I, I think in, in in his case, he still has more to give. Uh, especially in a system where where Nagamura wants the the outside backs to to provide more crossing. Uh, to mm-hmm. be fair, he he is um, I believe he does have uh, a couple of assists here on the year. Uh, Lundqvist, yep, leader. He's a leader with Ferreira with three. But I still think he could be giving more uh, from what just the eye test and what we've seen him do. Um, he's he's a guy that still I think needs needs to. Um, I think again, he has more to give. Yeah, yeah, like you just mentioned, I think his he has more to he's give. He's solidified his position, but I, I don't, I, I don't see a huge gap between him and Sam Junk. Is what I'm saying. I wouldn't. I don't know. Not a huge one, but I still see him. You know, with a little bit more umph to be in that position. Um, maybe he hasn't grown as much as we perhaps expected from what we had seen from him. You know, in prior seasons, he's kind of just stayed kind of like the same. But I feel like he has that. Um, I, I, I think he could give more and he has more. Um, it's just kind of seeing when it's going to really come out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the midfield we've, we've, we've talked at nauseam on that stuff, uh, up top goals, um, here are your leading goal scorers, right? Uh, Sebastian Ferreira five, um, in 12 matches, although, we could argue that maybe he should be having some more depending on, and, and it's more credit to yeah. Ferreira, right? Because mm-hmm. of the way he's gotten some of these goals. Um, Quintero's also up there with five. Um, uh, Tyler Pasher has two, Fafa Pico has two, and then you got a couple guys with ones, uh, Carrasquilla, Jadebe, who got his first goal this year, and, and Doro Farson. So, um, the goal scores, what, what have you seen? Uh, where do you think it could still get better? I mean, it's it's like I've said before. I think Ferreira, um, unfortunately, right now he has to kind of do those goals like the one he did um, a couple games games back that he scored from. Was it, was it mid or or more? 
Yeah, the no, it was it was farther from midfield. The Austin one was uh, was outside the box, way outside the box, um, and and that's obviously one that that I mean that was essentially all him, right? Um, the first yeah, one, if well, I remember, I mean, I think that he might have to start doing more of those if if he's not getting enough balls filtered to him. And I know it's not part of his the position, but you know, I think that sometimes forwards need to do a little bit, you know, push back a little bit. And I know it's, it takes a lot out of them because going back and forth and being on the top, it's a lot, but unfortunately, I mean, I think that, that he's going to have to either do what he did in that game against Austin with scoring really far away or trying yeah. to go back a little and kind of just bringing the ball with him and, and scoring. Um, yeah. I remember here, here's the, uh, the Ferreira goals. I, I have, um, Here's how they happen. So the first one, remember, the first two were against San Jose. Remember, that first one was off a corner where he finds separation and goes to the other, to the other post, and he just hits it in. Um, that second goal was on the inside, uh, inside the box, uh, where he just kind of finishes it. That's probably one of the better, more more cleaner finishes as far as like a group play, right? Um, because the other one was against FC Dallas. That one wasn't as clean of a pass, but mm -hmm. goal scores go right. Just you know. I think yeah. he, he stops it with his right, hits it with his left. Um, the outside the box one against Austin, and obviously the one in 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 LA where he essentially just cleans up there for Corey Barrett, and he just like lobs it over and, and pushes it into the net. Those have been the five goals for Sebastian Ferreira. Um, if you want to include the open cup goal, that was also off a corner kick where he finds mm -hmm. separation, gets the open header, and boom. Um, Hasn't had as as we mentioned as clean service. If he got a little more, maybe you got a couple more goals in there. Maybe yeah, I, I think that would be it. leaders. So yeah, I think, I think that, that that would be. But like I said, unfortunately, like and like you just said, the the perhaps or the maybes, you know, you can't live off of that. So he has to see what he can do with what he currently has. Yeah. Um... And, and I just going real quick on here. Uh, Quintero's five goals have come. To the, the two of them were against Vancouver in that game, right? Um, that game at home where it essentially dominated Vancouver, where Vancouver stayed back, and, and either way, the Dynamo had their way with them uh, at mm -hmm. Miami. Um, if I, but that was off penalty, right? Uh, against San Jose, which, uh, again, great conversion there to, to get just the kind of ball that falls to him. And then uh, again, another penalty, the one against Nashville, to to sort of just you know put that up, uh, uh, make that a win because they were winning one nothing. That penalty makes it two nothing, and they just kind of managed that the rest of the way. So, uh, but two penalties for Quintero, and that's you know uh, the other ones. Uh, you know, I, I guess my my question to you is, um, is this is this attack uh, right where you want to see it? I know your answer, but I still I still want to ask. <laughs> No, of course not. I think that, you know, out of 100, I think that they're in the loading kind of moment. I think that they're at like 25%, I want to say. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it needs a lot of help. And I think that we can't just put that on to the forwards. Um, that how do you like to midfield. How do you like the Quintero production, though, for 600,000 uh, a year? Better than whatever I mean, the hell he was giving you last year for over a million, I mean, right? I've seen guys do <laughs> do less for uh, more money, so. Not impressed. You're not impressed. I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not disappointed, but I'm not impressed. Um, I think like the word uh, underwhelmed. I'm trying to find like a word that really describes like, of what to be I, fair, I, I feel like he probably him. owes the team money for last year. So there you go. That this is the yeah. Is but if we go into that, there's a lot of players that owe the team money. Then and we're gonna go into that. Well, there's a, there's some players here that are stealing some money. <laughs> well, that's what me. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, if I mean, if we're gonna talk about that, I think there's players that have done less than him that need yeah. to be out a long time ago. So um, all right, lower end of the roster. Um, Here's here's where I think you are. The the way I look at this team, right? There's been there's been what like about fifteen to maybe twenty guys involved overall, right? On a on a game day, which is about I mean it's about what what a game day roster is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to me, those last ten spots, um, for now it seems and there's something you know. Analyze this how you will. 
I think there's a lot of young guys, right? Um, that maybe should be at Dynamo 2 full time um, that are occupying roster spots on the first team. Mm-hmm. But if, if, Could I think that maybe be more competitive fill-ins. players? No, but look, like Juan Castilla, right? He hasn't seen minutes with the first team. And I, and I know he's a player for the future, but and obviously he's been playing with Dynamo 2. But you know, is he a player that's gonna that's gonna give you minutes in the first team this year, or should you just strictly have him at Dynamo two and use that spot for somebody that that yeah. can you know maybe give you some more first team minutes, an old veteran player, or just somebody you somebody more more first team ready, right? If you if you can if I can put it that way, um, the, the third goalkeeper I'm not gonna worry about too much, um, you, you know. But like Danny Rios, right? We haven't seen him anywhere. Uh, Brooklyn Reigns, we know the story there. They're waiting for him to complete a certain number of hours for him to, to, to be on the MLS roster, but he's he's mm-hmm. on the MLS roster. Um, you know, Marcelo Palomino, we haven't, I believe we haven't seen him this season in, in first division, right? Um, you know, Ian Hoffman, right? Uh, you know, once you get it higher up the list, right, these are the guys that have maybe seen some playing time, right? Sam Junka, Ethan Bartlow, I mean, those are fine, but just... Um, you know, some of these other guys here at the lower end of the roster, it's um, that's why I wonder if there could be maybe one, two. And then, of course, some, you know, some guys that maybe they can just move on from um, and, and get somebody with, with much more uh, um, uh, production. Right. Corey Baird, who great. He finally scored his first Dynamo goal in, in about 20 games. That came in the Open Cup, right? In MLS minutes, that hasn't really provided much. Uh, there's been some missed opportunities there. Um, you know, uh, Griffin Dorsey may be a good backup to have. We'll see. I mean, we started, we're, we're starting to see how, how Nagamura is using him. But um, what are they doing with the open spot with of Mateo Bajamich, right? Mm-hmm. Um, could that be a player that, that, that you know, if you're not going to use him or, or, or what, what's the plan there to move him on? Um, so, so I do think there's still there's still ways to adjust this roster, um, and especially if your goal is to to make a a cup to a run for the MLS Cup. Um, but I do get the sense sometimes that maybe maybe this is it. Maybe once Herrera gets here, that's the last spot in, and I don't I don't I don't know if we'll see much change. What do you think? Ah, uh, well, I expect more i mean come on I, I and i've said this before yeah herrera is a good player but there's somewhat of a, a lot of a hype underneath the whole production of him coming over and stuff like that um let's keep in mind that he's more in the older kind of soccer age right he's a little older compared to others um i don't think that he's going to be the magic pill right because we don't know how fast he's going to adapt to the mls or adapt to you know, his teammates. Um, or his teammates adapt to him. because I'm- Exactly, exactly. So I feel like we can't expect for Herrera to get here and everything be wonderful and um, everything's going to be magical and everything's going to be fixed because that's why it's a team. It's not a one-player, you know, game. It's a team effort. And, yeah, you can have how many ever, you know, four, three stars, whatever, in your team, but of the rest of the laborers or the rest of the team aren't doing what they need to do of their part then nothing's going to get done at the end of the day and you know everything's going to stay the same we're just going to have a a player that's well known compared yeah. to other seasons we we might get to see some of these uh jingle players in the uh in this next match june 11th uh dynamo charities cup is back a friendly international friendly against Atlético de san luis uh after that the uh, three uh, three matches to end the month of June. That's uh, at Orlando, uh, home on the 25th to the Chicago Fire, and then and then a quick turnaround to to play at Portland. Uh, July is going to be a little bit more balanced, right? Um, three home, three away uh, against Charlotte, against Dallas, uh, at Austin, at San Jose, uh, against Minnesota, and at Philadelphia. So. Um, mm-hmm. I think we'll uh, we'll obviously find out more about the team coming up, but uh, let's see how they tweak this. And then obviously the uh, the summer international transfer window. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, ending thoughts. Uh, what do you got? What do you got for us as the uh, as June begins to kick off here? I mean, I think that yeah, people might come out and say, well, at least right now, if today was a day that was a cutoff day for the playoffs, they would be in the playoffs, right? 
So that might be an argument that we might hear. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, but they're in the seventh. <laughs> so, yeah, here's that's my not quick, safe, safe. Here's my quick rebuttal on that. There's there's a couple more months left to the season. And, you know, at least Seattle will rise from those lower spots in the Western Conference and come exactly. up to, to one of the top seven spots. And if you're the seventh team, well, guess what? You're going to you're going to get pushed out. Uh, so. I think I think it's time to yeah, get and that's points. why I said yeah, the seventh and one, Portland's, but it's not a safe, safe spot. Yeah, Portland's also looking to climb up. Yeah, yeah, aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, any last words? Um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I, you said thirty days, and I think that it's something that really gives you information locally. Having people, you know, like Victor, that's been covering the team for so many years, and myself too, not only with the Dynamo, but also with the Dash, and you will not get that anywhere else for sure. Yeah, and that is uh, that that is a key selling point because it's um, – the way it works it is strictly that. You sign up, yeah, you put your credit card info in there, but it doesn't charge you until the 30th, 31st day, whatever it is. And then uh, – so if you want to cancel before then, um, you know, if you don't like it, that's that's your prerogative. Um, but you don't have to. You don't have to put up the uh, um, the full fee right away if you're if you're doing the annual plan or if you're doing the monthly, the month to month. And and like you mentioned, it uh, Dynamo Dash uh, Austin Dallas, uh, all these things on StrikerTexas.com. Um, at Victor Reiser, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, we can find you, I think, right uh, at Laura Gomez yeah. News still. Yeah, still I haven't changed. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I think you got like a subscription fee going on for that or something i wish i need to start that that's what i'm gonna do next <laughs> all right until next time we'll see you here uh don't forget to subscribe so you can get the episodes as soon as they get uploaded uh we'll catch you next time here on inside the hexagon bye